From Illinois Public Media News, this is 217 Today. I'm Kimberly Schofield. It's Tuesday, June 18th. Coming up, the country's largest Protestant group voted to oppose in vitro fertilization, or IVF. We'll learn more about what this vote could mean for reproductive choice across the U.S. That story in just a few minutes, but first, these headlines. Illinois lawmakers have passed a bill expanding access to fentanyl testing strips in an effort to combat opioid-related overdoses. Mawa Iqbal reports. The bill is just one signature from the governor away from becoming law. It would direct the State Department of Human Services to create a grant program for health facilities to distribute testing strips, which test other drugs for traces of fentanyl. Harold Pollack is a public health researcher at the University of Chicago, and he says bills like this are needed. Our society has such a tenuous commitment to the well-being of people who use drugs that when I see things like the fentanyl test strip law and other things that they're doing, um, I find it very heartening. Pollack says it's also important to make it easier for people to access medication used to treat opioid addiction, like methadone. I'm Mawa Iqbal. University of Illinois researchers have developed an antibiotic that kills drug-resistant bacterial infections while sparing healthy gut microbes. IPM's Anulika Ochuba has more. In studies with mice, lolomycin successfully targeted gram-negative bacterial infections while preventing other infections. Kristen Munoz is a study co-author. She says there's a growing need for more selective drugs because broad-spectrum antibiotics can harm some bacteria in the gut microbiome. It's going to hit everything that's in your microbiome. It's going to kill both the gram-positives, the gram-negatives, what's causing the infection, what's not causing the infection. Because of that, some good bacteria gets wiped out and they're present in certain levels, so they can kind of keep other levels of bacteria at bay. Munoz says the study is a proof-of-concept idea that gram-negative selective antibiotics can be designed. She says more research is needed to better understand the drug. I'm Anulika Ochuba, IPM News. On Thursday, Selena Johnson will give a Juneteenth celebration concert at the U of I's Cranert Center for the Performing Arts in Urbana. The event, sponsored by Illinois Public Media, begins at 5 p.m. Johnson is an actress and author who has collaborated with Kanye West, Common, and Anthony Hamilton. She says she's very familiar with Champaign-Urbana. My husband is University of Illinois alumni. Um, They are also recruiting my son in basketball, so that's fun. And I went to Illinois State, so we were at U of I all the time for parties and stuff like that. Selena's father is the late blues singer Syl Johnson. You can hear a full interview with Selena Johnson ahead of Thursday's concert at IllinoisSoul.org. Still to come, the country's largest Protestant group voted to oppose in vitro fertilization, or IVF. We'll learn more about what this vote could mean for reproductive choice across the U.S. That story is coming up next on 217 Today. Next time on The 21st Show, a new study looks into the effects that so-called forever chemicals have on the health of certain women. Plus, all summer, we'll be talking with Illinoisans competing in this year's Olympics and Paralympics. First up, Oksana Masters from Champaign. I'm Brian Mackey, and that's next time on The 21st Show. Join us. You're listening to 217 Today. I'm Kimberly Schofield. The Southern Baptists voted to oppose in vitro fertilization, or IVF, at their national convention in Indianapolis. Side effects public media's Ben Thorpe reports some worry the move could indicate a growing opposition to IVF and a widening restriction on reproductive choices. Delegates from some 50,000 churches gathered in Indianapolis this June to tackle many issues, including a resolution to oppose in vitro fertilization, or IVF. The resolution does not explicitly forbid members from using IVF, but it does call on Southern Baptists to advocate for the government to restrain reproductive technologies like IVF. It's the first time the country's largest Protestant group has considered such a resolution. And I move that the convention adopt resolution number six 
Some within the SPC say they have long been waiting for a moment to address their concerns with IVF. And with the Alabama Supreme Court ruling that frozen embryos can be considered children earlier this year, some, like Andrew Walker, see an opening. He's an associate professor of Christian ethics and co-author of the Southern Baptist Convention's resolution. All I'm doing is bringing the full force and logical conclusion of my principles on unborn, preborn human beings and applying that to frozen human beings. During IVF, eggs and sperm are merged in a lab dish to form an embryo. The treatment often creates more embryos than can be used for pregnancy. Those extra embryos can be frozen, used for research, or destroyed. Walker says that's a problem for Southern Baptists, who see those embryos as people. I would never encourage or affirm or even deem ethical uh, IVF for, for any, anybody because of my, my beliefs about human dignity. But not all members were on board with a stance against it. Zachary Sahadik of Ohio emotionally told members before the vote that he could not see IVF as inherently wicked. I have a son because of IVF. I have another son 20 weeks old in my wife's womb because of IVF. And I have 10 embryos that I love and with every bit of my being we will have or see born into a Christian family. Despite the emotional testimonies, most members were not swayed. The eyes have it, and the resolution is adopted. Some health experts had their eye on the Southern Baptist Convention. Paula Amato is the president of the American Society for Reproductive Medicine. She was raised Catholic and understands how important belief systems are for many of her patients. That patient says, you know, I, I just want to fertilize a limited number of the eggs that we retrieve. I will certainly accommodate that patient. Amato says it's possible to work with patients to fertilize as few eggs as possible, but that could make an already expensive procedure even costlier. That's because not all eggs that are fertilized in the lab will ultimately be suitable to be placed back in the uterus in the hopes of becoming a fetus. This notion that we create a lot of embryos that never get used, it, first of all, it's not as many embryos as, as, as that might imply. And uh, secondly, part of the reason we do it is to minimize the risk to the person undergoing the procedure. There are signs Southern Baptists may already be moving to take that resolution a step further. Recently, Senate Republicans blocked a bill to codify protections for IVF. The Southern Baptist Convention's Ethics Committee had urged lawmakers not to move forward with IVF protections as early as this May. That's exactly what worries Louise King, a reproductive bioethicist at Harvard's medical school. She says the majority of Americans are in favor of IVF. So for a small group of people who feel differently to say that their viewpoints should somehow govern the behaviors and decisions that other people make around family building is, is way, way too far not consistent with how we live in this country. Questions about protecting access to IVF have already made their way into the presidential race and could be a factor in the November election. Ben Thorpe, Side Effects Public Media. Side Effects Public Media is a health reporting collaboration of NPR member stations across the Midwest. And finally, in your forecast, meteorologist Andrew Pritchard says today will be mostly cloudy with a slight chance of a shower or thunderstorm and a high of 89 degrees. That's it for today. 217 Today is produced by Stephanie Mosqueda. Reporting today contributed by Mawa Iqbal, Anuliko Ochuba, Reginald Hardwick, and Ben Thorpe. Music by the Kilbourne Alley Blues Band. Reginald Hardwick is our news director. I'm Kimberly Schofield. 217 Today is a production of Illinois Public Media. Thanks for listening. Stay safe, and we'll talk to you again on Thursday.